ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Let's talk about this Mr. Beast situation. Now, this is getting worse. So. We talked last week about the, the transgender guy on his team that turned transgender, <clears throat> but per his sister, he's just a cross-dresser looking for attention. Uh, Ava Chris Tyson. So we talked about him and, you know, the things that he was doing in the Discord server. So the guy that I told y'all to go watch the video who kind of broke stuff down, um, Dog Pack 404 well, he came back with another video two days ago called Mr. Beast is Evil. And in that video, he had a man on there named Josh. Let me see if I have his name here. I have some notes. He's a former employee. Where's his name at? All these damn former employees. I don't know. It's Josh. Oh, Jake. I said Josh. I'm sorry. Jake Waddell. Y'all gotta be bad with days, child. His name is Jake Waddell. And so he was a former Mr. Beast employee. And again, I didn't watch Mr. Beast. Um, and even my kids don't watch Mr. Beast because they're they're older now. So I don't I didn't know. I the only thing I knew about Mr. Beast was that he was like helping people in Africa, giving people cars and homes. He was, you know, saving people's eyesight. So I didn't know there was like a whole nother side to the Mr. Beast channel where he's doing all these crazy, you know, challenges and things like that. Um, I'm just not into like really corporate, um, like highly produced YouTube content like that. Because if that's the case, I'll just watch television. If I want to see challenges and all that stuff, I'll just watch it on TV. But I get it. The youth, that's who it's geared for. It's not geared for my grown ass. It's geared for the youth, right? For like the babies. So a lot of young people watch Mr. Beast and they want to look up to him. I see him at my grocery store. Like when I go to Walmart, he has like chocolate bars and um, feastable cookies and stuff. I, <coughs> excuse me. I've never bought any of his stuff. Not interested. But, you know, I thought, you know, he's the most popular. So I assumed he was one of the, you know, so-called good guys. Well, now we're finding out he's very sadistic, very weird. And so this former employee is talking about the abuse that he faced under Mr. Beast and, and company when he worked for them. And so he was saying that basically Mr. Beast was making all this money. He has all these people working for him. And the work environment is very strenuous, right? You're working long hours. Um, you know, he just, he makes people, like, let's say he wants you to go and ask a store employee, can they shoot in the store? If the store employee says no, he has in the handbook that no doesn't mean no, which is kind of creepy because no should mean no in any situation. I don't care if it's about sex and I tell you no and you still proceed, then now that's S-A, possibly the R word, right? If you're asking me for something, like you're asking me like, you know, can I get some money and I tell you no, bitch, no means no. Don't keep asking, right? So, but in Mr. Beast's world, he's saying that mo that no doesn't mean no, which is weird. And this is in the company the company handbook. So, he admits that Mr. Beast faked some of his stunts. Then he says him and this black man that also worked for Mr. Beast, they felt like, you know, they needed more money. The black man had a child and everything. And so he decided to ask the black man, let's go talk to Mr. Beast together. You know, let's demand more money for what we're doing. You know, we're getting paid the bare minimum. We should get paid more. And so when he went in there, and the black man didn't want to go in. The black man was complacent. He said, well, hey, you know, I know I have a child, but I like working here. You know, it gives me some type of clout, so I'm cool. Well, Jake drags him in there, and uh, Mr. Beast ends up firing both of them. So I'm going to play you guys clips from Dog, uh, Dog Pack's video. I have some timestamps. So we're just going to listen to some of the stuff that Jake is saying. 
Let me show you my timestamps. Because it's a long video, but I think I gave like the rough synopsis. So let's go ahead and um, watch this here. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, this is Jake. Not Jake from State Farm, but Jake from Mr. Beast. So let's listen. Oh, let me mute my mic. In the 90s, on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. Mm -hmm. But now I make dog shit pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what the Writers Guild industry standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube and I didn't even bring up residuals because, oh my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, how did I get retire? But uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the V-stuff shook out was... Talk now. I feel, I feel really guilty about the way it just like, shook out. Um, yeah, I was talking to this other writer, like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is. And I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I'm not a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He's just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, I, you know, I trust you. And he said, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said at my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, if I knew he was going to lose his job, too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day, you know? And I get to go, go home and you get, you're going to pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's okay, let me address that real quick. Because <clears throat> I notice a lot of, like, I've seen, like, some white male YouTubers comment on this part. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still kind of under the weather. Um, and they're saying, well, why did he bring up race? Does it matter if the guy was Mexican? Um, if he was white, would you be crying? Why are you bringing up race? But I think he brought up race to make a point. Now, from what I've been hearing as of late, they're saying that Mr. Beast has said a lot of racist things in his past. He's used the N-word along with the Ava Chris Tyson man said the same thing. And so what he's saying is that basically this black man who's older than him, he's a 20-something-year-old white guy. The black guy is older, and he also has a son, and he's getting paid less money even though they're doing the same job. And I get it that when you're a white man, you're coming from a, and not all white men, right? But the average white man is coming from a position of power and a position of, um, you know, where you're not going to, this is not something you have to ever think about. But pay disparity is very real, especially to people of color. And that is what he is talking about. It's not like, oh, because that's what I keep seeing like these white guys online saying, well, why did he bring up race? Who cares if he's black? Why are you bringing up race? You're trying to make it a race issue. It's not about race. 
It is. They are doing the same job. The black man is older than him, meaning that he probably has what? More experience than this 20-something-year-old white man. And he's getting paid the same shit pay. Okay? And the black man was so happy just to be in that position where he can say he's working for Mr. Beast. It's probably the coolest thing he's ever done. So he doesn't even want to rock the boat. And a lot of us are like that, especially people of color, especially black people. A lot of times at our jobs, we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to ask for what we know, you know what I'm saying, that we're worth. Because it's like, dang, if I ask for what I'm worth, then they might, you know, get mad. I might get fired. Like, we have a mentality that we should just be grateful to be there. Remember Prince, the great Prince from Minneapolis. He spoke on this when he gave that speech. At the award show, I remember Russell Simmons was in the audience with his arms crossed looking all angry when he was like, you black people were blessed people. Quit being grateful to just sit at their table. Prince said this, you should own your masters. You should get all of your publishing. So I respect this young white man for basically calling that out. He's not trying to make this a race baiting issue, but this is real things that black people go through where we can go for the same job <clears throat> and we will be paid less than our white counterparts or even being a woman and getting paid less than a man, but you're doing the same job. That is very real. But see, a lot of these guys are coming from a, pay, a place of privilege, so they're not even open to this concept. They're just knocking him for bringing that up. But that is why he's bringing that up, and I, I can respect him for saying that. I respect him for bringing that up. And then the fact that he's breaking down crying says a lot. He felt bad that he got that black man fired from his job because the black man didn't even want to stand up for himself. And he only felt comfortable standing up for himself once he had the white ally to help, you know, try to get more pay. And what did Mr. Beast do? He fired both of them. So they both got fired. And he said the black man was devastated because a lot of times, again, we're taught that we should just be grateful. She just be grateful to be here. No, pay me my worth. So I respect that. So that's what he was saying. I hope you guys get that. It's not him just trying to race bait. That happens in everyday life. So let me keep going here. Let me find the next timestamp. Okay, so now we're going to move down to about 22 minutes here. He was my boss, and that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim, and I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me, saying, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, boy. You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm thinking, like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in here. Um, Jimmy comes in and, uh. I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? Okay, real quick, let me explain for people who are confused. So basically, after he was fired, he never, you know, said anything. He just kind of moved on. Mr. Beach, Mr. Beast, excuse me, reached out to him like maybe two, three years later and was like, oh, well, you know, um, you were quiet. You didn't blast me. So I want to give you an opportunity to come back and do a video for the company. But it's going to be a test video. Um, you know, it may or may not appear on YouTube, but we need somebody to do this test run. And so, you know, he's a broke, struggling comedian. So he was willing to do it, but he didn't know what all it entailed. And this entailed him like being locked in a room with the ice cream machine 
um, a hot tub and they kept the lights on day and night. And he's supposed to live in that condition for a hundred days. I'm like, what in the, you know, what in the suicide? What was that, that show that was on Netflix? Like, what is going on here? It doesn't make any sense. And so he agrees to it because he, he needs the money. And Mr. B said that he was going to pay him like 300000 if he would do this. And he's going to be like the test dummy before Mr. Beast can basically roll this out to the public. So that's what he's talking about. He's been sitting here. Yeah, something like Squid Squid Games. I said Suicide Game. Child, I'm thinking about Suicide Squad. Squid Games, thank you. Um, yeah, like something like Saw, Jigsaw. Thank you, Cherry Bomb. It's just really weird and sadistic. So this man has been literally locked in this room. He said within a few days, the ice machine, I mean, the ice cream machine stopped working. Everything smelled really funky and nasty. The hot tub stopped working. It was just cold. Um, and then it was funky because it wasn't filtered. So he's sitting in this funky room with a hot tub. Like the room is painted. It looks cool. The aesthetic is cool. But living in this room for like days on end was a horrible experience. And then on top of that, just to like fuck with him more, they never turned the lights off. And he was not, <coughs> excuse me, allowed any clocks. He never knew if it was daytime or nighttime. He didn't know what day it was. You know, just, this is like torture. This is low-key torture. Then Mr. Beast comes in and tells him that he wants him to um, do a, a Rubik's Cube. And he, he doesn't really know how to do a Rubik's Cube. Well, if you can't do that, then you need to run a mile. And he makes him run a mile on the treadmill. And I think he said it took him like several hours. He ended up getting blisters on his feet. Mr. Beast is really sadistic. So we're going to go ahead and finish listening. I want to kind of give you all a backstory. And he goes, oh, cause this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're going to, you're going to run a marathon. You're going to do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm, I'm not dyslexic. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't know how to do Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge, Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. I was like, on oh, camera. I don't, I don't want to do it. He goes, just do it for the thing. Like, kid you yeah. Like, that, that there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. We know he's I couldn't say no to the to treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, I, I... People who run marathons train forever, and it's still hard. Again, writer. So I look like I run. I don't run, you know, let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to, get the boost and I want the cash. And so I start running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I, I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. All right, I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe, just all over, just these big red, I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just the, the lactic acid. I, I, I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and that's when, um, yeah, uh, the psych in and I talked to the psych about how I'm uh, not well. And, uh, <laughs> Like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They'd go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I don't love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like at least seven more days. 
patent down. No. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, yeah, everything was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it. Uh, They brought it on people I liked and Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Damn. But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. And he turns around, he stands up. Oh, and he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's um he's like, oh stop, you're gonna make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not he's just I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says uh you as as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh yeah, you know, your mental health's the most important thing, you know, just wanna make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. The S, he just, he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300K, but I got, he goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges. So you got, you know, 100,000 some change. You know, give or take. You know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes alone. And now I spent all that money on doing stand up. I just, I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. Okay, so I think we've, we've heard enough. The man is obviously suffering from PTSD. Um, and I know a lot of people are saying, well, he's grown, you know, he chose to do it. Um, he chose to do it for money. And this is what I'm going to say about that. <clears throat> Granted, he's grown, right? He chose to put himself, quote unquote, in this situation, but he did not know the situation was going to be that sadistic. That's not what he told when he first signed up for it. And instead of judging somebody doing something for some money, how about we judge our current financial system and how often the lowest of the low are the ones who get blessed with, with the money. Like I said on this channel a million times, you don't get into that billionaire space being a good person. That's why I've never liked Vince McMahon and so many others because they've had to step on people, use people, manipulate people and do all types of fucked up shit to get to their position. And instead of judging the fact that he did that for some money, be grateful that you haven't been put in a position to where you've had to do something unbecoming, something degrading, something that you know you know deep down in your heart that you shouldn't do, but because you're in such a horrible situation and your back is against the wall, that you're willing to do it. That is a horrible position to be in in life. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, the more I'm learning about Mr. Beast, it seems like that's what he does. That's his control over people. The fact that he has this money dangling over people's heads. Right now, the economy is bad. A lot of people are struggling. Rent is high. Interest rate is high. So a lot of people possibly may be willing to do some strange things for some change. And for him, it wasn't something sexual. This was a, a challenge. But he never expected to go into this challenge and you're being told that you had, they won't turn off the lights? How come all these other challenges, they can Photoshop, they can use CGI, but when it comes to like making sure your so-called ex-employee slash friend is okay, that has to be real. But everything else is okay to be faked. So I think this is like really sickening and says a lot about Mr. Beast. And like I've always said, to me, like, okay, cool, you're giving things away, you're doing charity, but is it really charity when you have to announce everything? When you're having to film everything and post it on social media 
It's not about the homeless person that you're giving money to. It's not about the young kid who, who needs a new bike. You're doing it for yourself. Because real charity whispers. You write checks, you go out, you volunteer. You don't need a whole film crew. And I don't need to put it on social media to monetize it. You know, so to me, it just, it doesn't make sense. And, and I guess what has me even more confused is I'm assuming Mr. Beast is extremely wealthy, right? He has way more money than me and what most people make on average on YouTube. He's one of the biggest YouTubers. So why does he even have to do all of this? It doesn't make any sense. And from what I've heard, his backstory, he came from a single parent home. You know, he didn't come from like a wealthy background. So you worked yourself up or maybe he was propositioned and put there by Hollywood. Who knows? Either way, he worked from being in his room gaming to now being one of the biggest influencers on the planet. You're making money hand over fist. So why not just be fair? It doesn't make any sense. If you have a team of people and they're putting in just as much work and you guys are making money hand over fist, why not pay them a little bit extra? If they're doing the right thing, they're showing up every day, they're doing their job, are they supposed to get 50% of what you make? Absolutely not. But it should be something livable. He was saying they weren't even getting livable wages. And this man is damn near a billionaire. I go to Walmart, I see his chocolate and his cookies in Walmart. Matter of fact, today, yes, at the age of 26, thank you, at 26 years old, Today, he just dropped the kid's line. Let me, I, I just seen that article. Just, yeah, this is today. He got all these allegations brewing, and he just dropped the new kid's line. Mr. Beast releases tour line amid disturbing allegations. Now, let me also get to the disturbing allegation that's also being alleged so on top of him abusing this young man and um doing the whole torture thing to him and you know he it took him like i think he said months for his feet to heal because he was running in that treadmill for 10 hours he had blisters um his mental health is clearly affected the fact that even him recalling all of this stuff is making him break down crying you know, what grown man is just going to sit there and just break down crying if it wasn't some traumatic stuff that he went through? And also understand, <coughs> excuse me, that what's going on in this situation with Mr. Beast is also the stuff that goes on in Hollywood. And I don't understand how YouTube, which was meant for the regular everyday man and woman, like myself and so many other people, to come, you know, do vlogs, share a bit of ourselves with our audience and stuff like that. How now YouTube has turned so corporate and we're seeing some of these huge corporate YouTube channels has some of the biggest issues. So to me, this is no different than what's going on in Hollywood when you have a struggling actor, they sold everything in their small Midwestern town, they want to make it in Hollywood. You know, they're going on auditions. They're giving their best shot. And then some asshole producer invites them to, you know, a hotel room at 2 o'clock in the morning and propositions them. And it's easy to say, well, why did you go? There's nothing open at 2 a.m. besides legs. But sometimes people are in such desperate positions that maybe they will sleep with somebody because that's going to be the only way they can eat for the next week because their money has ran out. So to me, the problem is not so much even the casting couch because the casting couch, right, is a problem for those who are saying that. But the people who are playing puppet master on the casting couch, the people who are in positions of money, power, and influence, and they're using that position to exploit other people people that they deem who are below them and beneath them and the fact that they're willing to do anything to get a shot. And I think this is really sick that Mr. Beast has this same mentality, especially being that, you know, he himself came from not too much, from humble beginnings in North Carolina. But this is where they say that, you know, our money's not good money and eventually, you know, with 
a lot of money, it can corrupt people. Because there shouldn't be such a huge change in you just because you have money. So I just think that it's just, it's really disturbing. But now the the second disturbing thing that he also alleged is that there are pedophiles working at Mr. Beast. And one of the guys that they called a pedophile, his name is um Delaware. And they said they joked about it because he wasn't allowed to go back to Delaware or something like that. And um, if you guys remember Chris Tyson, the other weird um, alleged pedo, he had wrote this uh, a few weeks ago. Um, when he got into it with Jake Franklin. So Jake, Jake Franklin used to be another former Mr. Beast employee. That's who I was mixing him up with. But um, Jake is one who came out and said that Mr. Beast knew, that Jimmy knew about all the stuff that was going on with Ava Chris Tyson. So then remember Ava, T Ava Chris Tyson came back and he said the following. Let me share my tab here. He took to Twitter. So um, Ava says, never ask Jake how he protected his kid or his family from his bro-in-law. Then Andrea says, low blow, thought we weren't talking about kids. Then Ava Chris Tyson says, who you keep in your company describes a lot about you. And then he goes on to show this conviction record. Well, now it's come out that the guy Delaware is related to Jake, the guy that was blasting Mr. Beast a few months ago. But what Ava doesn't understand is that he's also low-key throwing his so-called BFF, Mr. Beast, under the bus because he says, who you keep in your company describes a lot about you. So if you're trying to clock Jake's T about who he's related to, what does that say about your best friend, Mr. Beast? I'm just saying. So now we fast forward to today. These were old tweets from Jake. They're calling my brother-in-law slash manager Delaware because that's his name. So now we fast forward to today. Let me pull up today's tweets. <coughs> So people started dragging him, and this is what Jake wrote today. Here's the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. Yes, he is a registered sex offender. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and others of SA when she was 11. Delaware took a plea deal. That's why there was no jail time, but he still had to register. <coughs> His nickname is in Delaware because he can't go back to Delaware. He's from Delaware. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's been back several times. He was hired before I was and was actually the reason I got hired at Mr. Beast. Before being hired, Delaware sat down with Jimmy and Sue, Jimmy's mom, and explained to them everything. So yes, Jimmy knew, but again, this incident happened in 2010. Delaware was hired in 2017, 2018. Delaware was also able was also let go from the company before I was. Delaware was supposed to be behind the scenes, was supposed to be a behind the scenes manager, but in a couple of videos he was asked to partake because he needed people, because we needed people and were reluctant, especially in the straight jacket video because of his charges. That's why he wore the mask. <clears throat> Delaware's charges are set to be dropped this fall. Delaware has been nothing but a good person, an amazing husband to my sister, and the best father to my two nieces that I could ever ask for. They want no parts in this and want to just live their lives away from the limelight. I understand why anyone would be upset and frustrated over these allegations. I do not blame them. Hurting kids in any way is completely unacceptable. But in the case of Delaware, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong and look forward to the day the charges are dropped. Thank you. So people are dragging Jake. And they were saying, so you're cool with pedophiles as long as you're in the family? Interesting. Jake comes back. He says, justice has been served long before I knew him. Next. Uh, somebody else says, this cut your 15 minutes back down to seven. Come on. Talking reckless, knowing that you got a pedophile as a brother and your only relevance is for Mr. Beast. Bro thought canceling daddy would give him more stake in the will but then got his own serving a cancellation. 
And then somebody re-edited his tweet, the one that he wrote that Jimmy knew, and they wrote, I knew. <laughs> the internet is shady. <laughs> so they wrote, I knew. So they've just been dragging him. This was the original one. Jimmy knew. So they've, they've altered it to, I knew. So the silence is deafening. So he was trying to call out Ava Chris Tyson only to find out that his own brother-in-law, this is a bunch of messy white people teach out, but um, we gonna spill it. The whole thing is just messy as hell. They're just all involved in a bunch of mess at this point. And um, I think it's sad. And so now what's come out with the Mr. Beast thing, Keemstar posted this that they're now about to have a new mandatory, he sent out a, a mandatory confidential email to his employees and somebody leaked it to uh, <laughs> Keemstar on Drama Alert. What you talking about, Willis? Okay, so I'm gonna try and be kind of small. I'm gonna try and zoom in. So they're saying Dear Mr. Beast team, uh, dear Team Beast, I wanted to update you all on the recent concerns that have been online and in the press. As I mentioned in a tweet a couple weeks ago, we have hired Quinn Emanuel, a top-tier law firm, to do a full investigation on the Ava Tyson allegation. We also asked him to expand the scope to include a full assessment of our internal culture and to investigate allegations of inappropriate behavior by people in the company. While the process is not complete, I have enough preliminary information at this point. I am announcing several changes today. As your leader, I take responsibility and I'm, a com and I'm committed to continue to improve and evolve my leadership style. While I have, only, I have mostly been focused on creating content, launching feastables and building our community and leading our philanthropic philanthropic, philanthropic <laughs> efforts, I recognize that I also need to create a culture that makes our employees feel safe and allows them to do their best work. Therefore, along with Jeff Hausenbold, our new president and COO, we'll be hiring a new chief human resource officer, chief financial officer, and a general counsel, along with other roles to add the capacity and competence to foster a better internal culture as we continue to grow. <clears throat> so that's what he's planning on doing. He's planning on hiring all these new people. But my thing is when he turned into an LLC, and again, this man is making money hand over fist, every video he drops, he gets, I mean, two, 300, 400 plus views. You know, we're talking about someone who drops a video and he gets millions of views per video. Why didn't he have all this stuff in place before? Once he decided to go more mainstream and, you know, more commercial, all of this stuff already should have been in place. But it wasn't because he also, you know, allegedly played around in the same manner. Attitude reflects leadership. So if this is the leadership and this was what's going on with Mr. Beast's knowledge, the employees are just doing what Mr. Beast is doing. He is setting the tone at the place. Now he's trying to clean it up because now you have all these former employees coming out against him. You have people who are on that Amazon show who were hurt. And another thing I found very weird with the Amazon show, um, I heard that, I don't know if there were minors on there, but they somebody pulled up a tweet where people were asking, could minors apply to be on there? And I think I ran across a video that said YouTubers versus minors. I don't know if that was clickbait or if that was an actual Mr. Beast video because I didn't get a chance to watch it. But I've heard that minors have been involved in a lot of his games. And so in the Amazon one, I don't know if anybody was of age, if there were some minors because they said it was different ages, young and old. But we're being told that their panties, well, underwear, not just panties, people's underwear were taken from them. Now, what's that about? And people were first to wear the same dirty underwear for like upwards of, a, you know, two, three days. There was some girl who said that I guess she was um, 
she had started, I think, her period, and she was just stuck in the same panties for several days. This is all on the internet. So now I'm thinking to myself, what kind of sadistic shit is that that you're taking people's underwear from them? That you want people to feel dirty and uncomfortable because they're not allowed to shower. And even if they shower, are they going to be wearing the same thing? I Like, I don't, I don't get that at all. So if there are young people on this game, and y'all can tell me because I, I don't know. But if there were young people on this Amazon game or other games, because the Amazon people are saying that their underwear were taken from them. Are underwear being taken from these children as well? And to me, that's even more disturbing. If they're taking people's underwear, what are they doing with it? Once they take people's, like, what are they putting in a pile and dancing around? Like, what are y'all doing with people's underwear? Where they're, they're forced to just wear the same thing. It, just, it sounds weird. This whole thing is just weird to me, the more stuff that comes out. And then now you have some man on the team. He's not on the team now, but at one point, his name was Delaware. And I'm not saying that people don't change, things don't happen. I'm not saying that people don't have a chance to work, right? Because once you pay your debt to society, you got to take care of yourself. I'm not taking care of no fucking grown adult. You got to get out there and get a job regardless of what's on your background, right? But it's a difference between him stocking shelves at Walmart after hours than him working on a kid's show. And that's the part that's disturbing. This is the second alleged pedo attached to Mr. Beast. First, it was his best friend having inappropriate conversations with 11, 12, 13-year-olds on the Discord server. And now we're talking about this dude named Delaware. These are people whose content is primarily for children. So at what point were you going to get all these measures in place? Why does it take people coming out for you to now want to hire an HR person and a COO and all this stuff? But the question still stands. Why were people draws being taken from them for days where you had young women bleeding on themselves for days? You know how humiliating that is? Like, that's insane. So I, I don't understand this. It sounds like some weird-ass blood magic ritual. His name is Mr. Beast. I already told y'all the mark of the beast. All this shit is weird to me. Because when I saw one of the, the uh, pictures for one of the games, I saw people of all, all ages, young and old. Now, I don't know if they were, like, young, like, you know, children, like, 9 and 10. But, you know, like, short, small. They didn't look like they had, you know, they didn't look like teenagers. It looked like it was just a wide range of ages. So I don't understand why people's underwear are being taken from them. Yes, there's a lady. She's talking about it. If y'all go and y'all look up, like, the stories about the people who played on the Amazon show that Mr. Beast was running, they said when they got there, their, their underwear was taken from them and their medication. So you had people who needed medication that weren't able to get their medicine for several days, people who had medicine that they had to take with food, and they were telling that there was no food for them to eat. This does So at this point, you're just being sadistic. Because this is a man who's worth millions. He gets millions of dollars off of his views. So why is there not a crafty table for everybody participating to eat? And this is another issue that I'm seeing. Is that it seems like a lot of things that you would see in Hollywood that would not be allowed. Because even on set, there's strict regulations on set. People have to be able to take breaks. Um, there's food there, lunch breaks, things like that. But when you have something that's based on the internet, and he's in North Carolina, he's able to skate around a lot of rules. He doesn't have to pay anybody SAG rates. They said he doesn't even like to hire people SAG. He doesn't even like to hire union people. Most of the people who work for him are non-union. So I think he knows what he's doing. And I feel like he's skirting a lot of corners and safety measures because he knows he can get away with it. If you're working on a production, right? Let's say I work in Hollywood and I'm putting together a production and I want to go film at a store. Like I want to do a shot at Target. I have to put in a request. I have to have permission to film. I can't just do it renegade style. 
but us as just regular people, we can go into Walmart and dance and do all types of, we, we've all seen the fuck videos. The comedians and the people doing skits in the middle of Walmart, they're able to get away with that because they're just regular civilians. But if you this is a Hollywood production or a studio production, you have to have permission. You can't just show it with your, with your camera equipment and start filming. But per Mr. Beast's employee guidelines, he's telling his employees, we're not going to take no for an answer. So meaning that he thinks he's above what the protocol is for somebody who has such a big production. And with production, anywhere you shoot, there are regulations. So let's say they build a set. Like when I was on Iggy, um, Iggy's music video, they built her whole set. This was a few years ago. And it was really dope to watch them build. They built like a jail cell. They built the salon. Everything was built from scratch. And I remember after we got done shooting the music video, me and her were talking and stuff. We were seeing all the guys taking stuff down. They're not allowed to leave that area until everything is taken down and it looks the way that you got it. And I remember driving by that same area where we shot the music video literally the next day because I had to go by there to go to another audition. You wouldn't have even known that we shot a music video there. You would not have known. But there's people coming out saying that Mr. Beast He'll go and shoot at a particular area or on the lake. They won't clean up. They'll just take their stuff, you know, you know, the expensive stuff, the camera equipment, and leave. But there'll be trash there, his explosions and all that stuff. Because there's nobody to hold them accountable. They're, they're, he's not part of any union. You can't call SAG on him. So he's doing a lot of sneak shit to skate regulations. That's not fair. That if he was in Hollywood, he'd be clocked and fined for. But he gets to do it under the guise of, I'm a YouTuber. Well, not really. You're not the average YouTuber. You're making videos with explosions and CGI. You can't compare what you do on YouTube compared to the average YouTuber that's just sitting in their home talking. You, sir, are a corporation. And you need to start behaving as such. So I, I don't know. The whole thing is just really unnerving. Somebody said it's giving Diddy vibes. Yeah, there's something going on there at that camp. And like I said, a, a, a grown man is not going to come out and break down crying like that unless like he's really thinking about like the trauma he went through. So it, it's a shame. I don't know what's going to happen, but they're going, they're deleting comments. Um, <coughs> the algorithm is suppressing people's videos who are calling out Mr. Beast. You know, you got to, you know, go searching for the videos. A lot of videos are getting suppressed. So they're doing things to protect their golden boy. You know, like always. It's not it's not a surprise at all. So, yeah, it's really disturbing. But y'all, like I said, watch that full video, uh, Dog Pack 404. He's on his second video. So watch the full video if you guys want the full context. But I think, I, I hope I broke it down. Um, enough for y'all. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.